Policy, 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 policy. Well, hi, everybody. Welcome to the Jiggy Jaguar Show. This is Roger Homefield. I'm Joe Citizen of the Joe Citizen Show, but I'll be sitting in for Jiggy the next couple of weeks. And Jiggy felt that uh, with two weeks to the election, he better give me something to do so I don't hurt myself. <laughs> it's been so stressful with that election coming up. And uh, But I will be doing Jiggy's show for the next two weeks, right till the end of the month. And, you know, Jiggy Jaguar never ceases to amaze me with the guests that he gets. Uh, they cannot be taken lightly. He gets some real heavyweights out here. And today is no different. Uh, I saw an interview just the other night on the iconic Jim Baker show uh, who featured uh, this man, Pastor Mark Biltz. And this is most interesting. Let me tell you about him. Mark Biltz is an American Christian pastor and best-selling author. He's the founder and pastor of El Shaddai Ministries. His theories correlate solar and lunar eclipses with biblical prophecy. Let me repeat that. His theories correlate solar and lunar eclipses with biblical prophecy. And he's published books on this topic. He also happens to be the Washington State Director of Christians United for Israel, or KUFI, as you may better know them. In 2008, he started researching a phenomenon he called the blood moon, quote unquote, blood moon. It correlated the data on NASA's website with the Hebrew calendar. Now, since then, he's come to be known as the, quote, Blood Moon's Built and the, quote, Blood Moon's Pastor. Now, he's appeared on many television shows and documentaries, appearing as himself. His all-encompassing website is www.esm.com. U.S. That's it's called El Shaddai Ministry. E-S-M dot U.S. El Shaddai Ministry. Uh, like I, if you turn on there, you'll be able to see that interview on the iconic Jim Baker show. Now, he's got books uh, on the website. He's they have books, documentaries, calendars, DVDs, thumb drives and, and all kinds of instructional and educational material. His books include Blood Moons, Decoding the Imminent Heavenly Signs. And Sooner Than You Think, A Prophetic Guide to End Time, and Decoding the Antichrist and the End Times, and his most recent, America at War, 24 through 2026, The Sons of Light versus the Sons of Darkness. Uh, Pastor Biltz, welcome to the Jiggy Jaguar Show. Well, thank you so much. It's so great to be with you, Roger. You know, I was fascinated by your interview because uh, there was so much. Um, I, I hate when people use the same phrases and the, the new words of the month, like unpack. I hate that. But that's actually, in this case, it really is appropriate. There's so much to unpack. We're not going to be able to, ladies and gentlemen, because we would need a team of scientists and mathematicians to, possibly to understand what the gentleman is talking about. But we're going to get to the main things of what it means to him and what it's going to mean to us. There are three areas I'd like to cover today. First is, what is it that you discovered uh, that enabled you to conceive of this blood moon theory? And then second, what are your conclusions for for the rest of us, based upon your findings? And third, do we still have any control over what's to come? So uh, let's let's start with number one. So how does prophecy by science work? And I heard you say that God is actually a scientist, and it makes sense. But how does prophecy by science actually work? And, and what caused you to come across your theories on the blood moon and God's calendar. So in layman's terms, what is a blood moon and God's calendar? And what is the math based upon? Fantastic, Roger. I love the questions. Well, to begin with, a blood moon is simply a total lunar eclipse. Now, I love tying science, math, and the Bible together. I believe God was the greatest or is the greatest mathematician, the greatest scientist. 
And God created a calendar. As a matter of fact, in Genesis 1.14, God said he created the sun, the moon, and the stars. The number one reason wasn't for light or heat. The number one reason he said was for signs. Now that is mind blowing. And when we think of a sign, we think of a eclipse. That's the signs the sun and the moon make when they are together. Well, what's important about that is you have to be on a biblical calendar to be aware when God is talking. The calendar the world uses is the Gregorian calendar, and it is based totally on the sun. They could care less about the moon. And the Muslim calendar is based totally on the moon and could care less about the sun. But the biblical calendar, God uses both. And when it says for seasons, days, and years, many people think seasons means winter, spring, summer, or fall. But that was a wrong Hebrew translation. What it really means is for appointed times. Like God has a day timer and he brings the eclipses on appointed times when he wants to speak to man. Well, you can only have a solar eclipse on a new moon and you can only have a lunar eclipse on a full moon. And this is why on the biblical calendar, Israel was to reckon the new moon as the beginning of each month. And the total lunar eclipse is in the middle of the month for Passover and the Feast of Sukkot that we're in right now. And so when Israel would see a eclipse on a new moon or on Passover and Sukkot, they knew God was trying to tell them something. This is why we have to be on his calendar. Well, back in 2008, I noticed seven years from then in 2014, 2015, there were going to be a total of four total lunar eclipses in a row without any other type of eclipse in between. And all of a sudden, I got off of the Gregorian calendar and put it on the biblical calendar, and I noticed they were falling on Passover and the Feast of Tabernacles, Passover and the Feast of Tabernacles, two years in a row. So then I looked at solar eclipses, and they were falling on Rosh Hashanah, the beginning of the civil year of the biblical calendar, and Nisan 1, which is around our March, April, the beginning of the religious calendar. So I knew back in 2008, something huge was going to be happening, and I knew it meant war. Accordingly, the sun, because it's so much bigger than Israel, the sun represents the nations, and the moon represents Israel. Well, mathematically, I wanted to see back in 2008 what those four blood moons meant. I knew it meant war. So I wanted to see when was the last time. What are the odds of this happening? Well, the last time it happened was that the Six-Day War in 1967. The time before that was when they became a nation in 1948-49. And the time before that was 1492 when all the Jews were kicked out of Spain. And it just goes on and on, even 70 AD. And so I thought, wow, this is something huge. But at the time, all I knew it meant was war. Well, uh, let me ask you this, uh, Pastor. Um, you're saying uh, not all the eclipses fall on major dates and major holidays, exactly. but, but but you notice that some of them were, yes. and then you use that as a template. As a template. Can you give us just a little bit of the math? I don't want a lot because my head will explode. But I mean, how how did you then use that with... It's it's just so far over my head to be frank with you, Pastor. How did you, how did you get the information about NASA? And you okay? The first thing you discovered was that hey, a lot of these uh, eclipses are falling on major biblical. Dates. Yes, and then you went from there. Yes. Well, then I go to NASA to really understand the <laughs> math, and it showed you on on average over the last five thousand years, NASA has five thousand years of eclipses. And the math says over 5,000 years, you only get one total lunar eclipse every year and a half, roughly. That's the odds. One total lunar eclipse in a year and a half. 
Well, now we're getting four total lunar eclipses in a year and a half. That just blows it off the chart. And then on top of that, they're all falling on biblical holidays. That even makes it more astronomically off the chart. And so I thought, oh my goodness, let's look. And then I looked at the history and they're happening during wars with Israel. So I knew something was coming, but do you know what, Roger? I didn't know what it was until two years ago, what the 2014, 2015 blood moons meant. And I do know now, and it's even more mind blowing. To, for uh, your listeners to understand, in the Bible, every 50 years was a year of Jubilee. And in the year of Jubilee, they eliminated all debt and people got their land back. Well, the biblical years of Jubilee was 1973 to 2023. So it just ended a year or so ago. Well, guess what? Yom Kippur, Israel's Day of Atonement, always begins the year of Jubilee. And what do we have? The Yom Kippur War in 73 was the very first day of the Jubilee year. 50 years later, 2023, the October 7th war was the very last day of the same Jubilee cycle. So here you have war, the first day in 73, the last day in 2023, and both of those were forewarned by the four total lunar eclipse in 67, which brought a war, as well as 2014, 2015, the four blood lunar eclipses was a warning of the October war that ended the Jubilee cycle. All right. Let me see if I'm grasping this a little bit. Um, you're saying that NASA had like 5,000 years of records of eclipses and there was there should have only statistically have been like a few of them. And yet then you discovered that there were four just in a year and a half. And, and what you did was you took you plotted these times yes, yes. and and you just uh, compared it to what happened in history exactly exactly and mathematically you only get one total lunar eclipse in a year and a half and i saw there were four and so i thought wow this is incredible mathematically so then i looked and they fell on two of the biggest holidays of the year in a row two years in a row that's just mathematically that is totally off the chart could you tell our listeners uh what a jubilee year is not everybody is going to know anything about it. Yes. Uh, every, just, well, there's also, well, let me not make it confusing. Let me just say a Jubilee year meant every 50th year there was an economic reset. All the debts were cleared. Think how that would help the economy if every 50 years there was an economic reset. But also the land wasn't to be sold, it was to be leased. And so therefore everyone got their land back. That sounds like a pretty good, a pretty good reset. Okay, so you found that there was an extraordinary amount of eclipses that we shouldn't have had, and then you compared that to the last time those things happened. Yes, Is that fair to say. Yes, and th that's exactly what I did, and I noticed each time there was something very prophetic that happened. Each time something prophetic happened. Uh, all right, let me ask you this. And now there actually is a lot of math involved with this. I think oh, I believe yeah. you showed some pages out of uh, your book is that showed all these mathematical equations. Yes, yes. And uh, it's it's very heady stuff. Um, now, are some of your conclusions revealed in your latest book, America at War, twenty twenty four through twenty twenty six? Yes, I I show. All through the book, I lay out economically where the United States is headed, and I, I really see war coming to the United States homeland within uh, the next couple of months and going all the way through 2026. It is all laid out prophetically. Yeah, well, and uh, yes, and there's something else you said that, that also... Uh, would would lead to that where you talked about the i don't want to get ahead of myself but uh you said that the election might even be uh in jeopardy um but uh we'll get into that in in a little while uh but i guess okay so you see things happening and 2024 2026 that's one of these one of them so the question would be and i was speaking to some folks about this they said well if everything is prophesized 
then is everything set in stone? Do we not have control of our destiny? Does it not make any difference what we do, or does it matter? In other words, can we help ourselves, our country, and our civilization, let's say, with the next election? A, a great question. I believe in some sense we are in control, uh, absolutely. Of, and what I mean in control, I mean not necessarily of world events, but in our uh, of our own events in life. Uh, one thing that is very important is we vote righteously. We vote for the person that is going to be the most righteous. Uh, but God is always looking for people to intercede. And just like with Nineveh, when it wasn't destroyed, when God said it was going to be, that means there are mitigating factors where things can be changed. But it comes down to even when the temple was destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar in around 600 BC, God told Jeremiah to stop praying, forget it. Yeah, praying isn't going to help. And so we, th there's a balance. And I believe right now, America, even within the church, there's so much wokeness and immorality that I am not sure how much we're going to have over the events. Uh, but not that, but even politically, we've allowed so many terrorists into mm -hmm. this country. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you right now, there are Iranian terrorist cells all over the United States that are ready to go as soon as they're ordered. And that's why I believe we're going to see terrorist attacks here very soon. On top of that, I believe the deep state doesn't want uh, Trump to win and they will do anything. If he ends up leading in the polls over the next couple of weeks, I would not be surprised if there isn't a uh, big uprisings that cancel the elections or they impose martial law or come up with some another virus. But you're going to see massive uprisings between the pro-Palestinians and the pro-Israelis. It's already happening right now in New York. They're saying we're taking it to the streets. No one's going to stop us. You're also going to see political uprisings between pro-Trump and pro-Harris forces, especially if the election is in doubt. You're also, I believe, going to see a lot of uprisings between the illegal immigrants and the immigrants. Mm. And can you imagine, Roger, if we don't have an election or it gets postponed mm. or there's so much fraud, no one trusts the results. We don't know who's in charge. That would be the perfect time for North Korea to attack South Korea, China to attack Taiwan. We're so involved in Ukraine. That's when Iran could attack and Hezbollah again, Israel. Uh, and, and so we are just leading America right into the ground. Our politicians are. It's really like we're going in reverse, headed towards the cliff. I've, I've never seen anything like it. Absolutely, especially economically. What most people do not understand economically, and let me put it real easy, the difference between one million, one billion, and one trillion. Yes. A million seconds is only 12 days, but a billion seconds is 33 years, and a trillion seconds is 33,000 years. Think of that. One trillion seconds is 33,000 years, and we're $34 trillion in debt, and we're going a trillion dollars in debt every quarter. The world is almost $100 trillion in debt. Everything is uh, bogus. Every, all of our financial system, I believe, is going to be crashing completely because of this over the next year. Well, I definitely want to get to that and ask you if you think uh, Trump can help thwart that. One interesting thing that I, I, I caught that you said, uh, we, we brushed on it just before, but you said that the morality of the church um, is now lower than the morality of what the world was 70 years ago. Exactly. If you remember, Gone with the Wind was the first movie that had a cuss word in it. And the public was shocked. And yet now the church is below the standard of the world of 70 years ago. Who won't go and listen to all these R-rated movies, X-rated, you know, and, and it doesn't even affect them. It doesn't even bother them, which means 70 years from now, the church will be at the same level that the world is right now. Yeah, that would be pretty unbelievable. Well, it was a four-letter word, though, that he used in God with the Wind. <laughs> <laughs> unbelievable. Um, okay, the money. 
Uh, there's so many questions I have for you. I, I doubt that they're going to be in order. I'm going to rely upon you to make sense of it. So I'm just going to throw these things out there. Uh, you say that that we can't we can't follow the prophecies if we're not on God's calendar. Exactly. And there's different calendars: the Hebrew, the Islamic, and then there's God's calendar. Um, how do you get on? Well, how do you find God's calendar, and how do you get on it? And and that way we would be able to predict and see these things happening. Absolutely. The whole thing is the church has gotten off of God's calendar. They've gone on a solar calendar. Julius Caesar from Rome. He's mm -hmm. the one working with the calendar, and it's only based on the sun. This is why to this day, sometimes Easter or the resurrection is celebrated a month before he even dies. How in the world do you celebrate the resurrection a month before he dies? It's because the church is using a solar calendar only because the devil wants people to miss the boat. As you know, with Noah and the ark, you better be there before the door closes. Well, it's the same thing today. People need to get on the boat. And the only way they're going to know is by getting on God's calendar. Now, we have calendars on our website that combine the Gregorian with the biblical calendar. So people always know what time it is. I ask a lot of believers if we're supposed to know the times and seasons. They'll go, yes. I'll go, what time is it? Oh, I don't know. What season is it? Oh, I don't know. But just like in Ecclesiastes, it says there's a time for war and a time for peace. When you know what time it is, we're in a time of war. We are in the war cycle right now, which is why I tell people to get on the calendar that you can get on uh, our website or any Jewish website. So for those experts that uh, are deep into biblical prophecy, uh, you would advise them, well, that's fine and dandy, but you have to be on the right calendar. Absolutely. You are so good. You are so good, Roger. You're asking all the right questions <laughs> because so many, there's a prophecy in Zechariah that these four biblical holidays will change drastically from fast days to feast days. But if you don't know when they are prophetically, you have no clue when it happens. Anyone who claims to be a prophet, they're not on God's calendar. I question their prophetic ability. Now you say that God created the calendar before he created mankind. I love that you reminded me of that. that. That tells us how important the calendar is to mankind. God wants to communicate with us. Uh, just like you build the nursery before you bring the baby home. Okay, well, God created the calendar on the fourth day and created man on the sixth day because he wants to communicate with us. But man says, no, we're going to create our own calendar. We're only going to use the moon. I mean, how, what would you say if I told you, okay, let's start celebrating your anniversary or birthday on the Islamic calendar? What would you think? I'm crazy. Well, it's the same thing. Why are we selling, celebrating biblical holidays on a pagan solar calendar? Think how that would make God feel. I mean, it's crazy. You don't tell your boss when you're going to go to work. He tells you when you're going to go to work. You know, you discussed... Uh... You discussed one of the reasons that we have these uh, misguided protests at the universities that I think is one of the biggest stains on America in our entire history. You know, when the German citizens, uh, per Eisenhower's orders, uh, had to go to the concentration camps to see what Nazism did, they were appalled, they were aghast, they were in shock, and they were greatly ashamed. But when... They took the videos to the Palestinian civilians. They were somewhat in glee, quite a different uh, reaction. And you talked about the, the students or, you know, these young people. I don't know if they're foreign students, if they're foreigners, if they're brainwashed from being over here or whatever. But you said certainly a lot of them are brainwashed and that uh, – there was a gentleman by the name of Dr. William Saxton. I was part of his group, the Security Council of America. And basically, he chose one niche instead of a whole bunch of things. He chose one niche, and that was to show that the publishers have sold out our civilization and our publishers have poisoned the minds of all the school kids, including all the way up through grad school all the way up through grad school. So uh, go ahead. You've got it, Pastor. Oh, my goodness. Uh, you, you're amazing. I tell you what, here's the thing. P 
Pearson Publishing is the biggest worldwide publisher of all of our curriculum for colleges, high schools, grade schools. And Pearson Publishing is owned by Muslims. It's owned by Qatar. It's owned by Turkey. And this is, they've invested billions of dollars to Cornell and many of these other universities, billions, and they supply Islamic teachers. And that is why our colleges are so off the chart crazy in Islam is because they've been paying for the teachers, paying for the curriculum, and people do not know what is being taught in the colleges, in the high schools, because now they don't let the kids take the textbooks home. Mm. Uh, fortunately, COVID actually brought out what was being taught as a parent goes into the room and sees what the kids are listening. And this is where this really came to light is what Pearson Publishing is doing. We have to take control of the school system or take them out of the school system mm. because Pearson Publishing is absolutely outrageous in anti-Semitism. You know, I bet the majority, the vast majority of our listeners, Pastor, have no idea, and Obama started this, and Harris Biden is doing the same thing, where they actually took the words Islamic terror, they deleted it. Yeah. From all yeah. law enforcement manuals. Right. Now, this is one of the biggest threats we have in the world, and we're supposed to go after it with a butterfly net when we can't say what it is, right. and that the FBI takes their marching orders from the Council of American Islamic Relations on what they can and cannot teach and show. Could you tell our listeners a bit about that? Well, it is absolutely ridiculous how our government is kowtowing totally to Islam, even to the point where Israel is almost in trouble in spite of the elections. They say if the Biden-Harris is defeated, you know, Harris is, they still got the government until February, and they say they're going to push for a UN resolution Security Council vote to create a two-state solution. If that they'll be so bitter and upset, that's what they're going to do, which would really hurt Israel. And if they win, they'll take their victory lap, and they'll still will try to do that as, as a way to punish Israel for not listening to them. But look, they just got done leaking all the information for Israel's attack on Iran. They are totally not pro-Israel in any shape or form. Absolutely, yeah. I was going to get to, well, we're, we're going to get to that right now. Um, you said that God will be against those who divide Jerusalem. And now when you say Jerusalem, you don't mean the city, you just basically mean Israel? Uh, well, I, mean, I, I mean a two-state solution. Right, if okay. So dividing is a two-state solution with Jerusalem divided, being half of it the capital for the Palestinians. Okay. All hell is going to break loose yeah. here. All right, so folks, what he's saying is that is that God will be against those that those countries who divide Jerusalem. And and that and unfortunately, we're on that list. And I'll tell you why. You just mentioned it. God would be against the United Nations the United States, Russia, and the European Union exactly. for wanting to divide Israel. And specifically, you're talking about the two-state solution. Right. And folks, there's been so many examples of us stabbing Israel in the back and betraying them. You know, first you said 100%, and then they came out with little things like out of nowhere, like make sure you stay within the rules of war. Why would they have told Israel that in the first place when they've been the most humanitarian army in the history of the world? So, so we knew that there was something going on there. But ladies and gentlemen, not only have they withheld on arms to Israel, then it came to pass that they withheld information from Israel. Then they want to tackle Israel on the one-yard line when they're ready to win the war and had Schumer not come out with that abominable betrayal of an enemy. We would never, as the United States, come out and say that about any country that they should change their I mean, I, I've never seen anything like it. Nevertheless, what, somebody that's supposed to be our best ally. And then, of course, the, with the, we're giving them our ironclad support, which is more like paper mache. Uh, but the coup d'etat of it all was that Israel, after they were scolded and told, oh, you can't kill civilians, and Israel's not trying to kill civilians. They drop leaflets. They, 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 they do all this stuff to try not to. But then when Israel had a couple of surgical attacks, after the 12 Israeli soccer 
children yeah. were killed on the field after that happened. And Israel retaliated. They retaliated with surgical strikes that took out leadership. Then the next, they didn't get any thanks or applause from the United States. Like, hey, you did a great job. And you were you were of your word. You you had as little collateral civilian damage as possible. And then even when they came out with this pager thing with Hezbollah, where you can't be any more surgical than that to individually take out the terrorists, did we congratulate them or thank them? Folks, these are the same terrorists that killed our soldiers in the barracks in Lebanon that we never made them pay for. OK, uh, Israel is doing our dirty work for us, but we won't let them. It's it's really quite incredible. But this last coup d'etat was that Israel was doing so well with these attacks, right? Like I said, that surgical attack and then the thing with the pagers. OK, so Israel advises America. They confide in Uncle Sam again what they're going to do in Iran and what happens. Their plans on how they're going to attack Iran are just magically leaked. And that is just so astonishing, Pastor. Now, we don't necessarily have 100% proof yet that it was the United States that leaked it. But if we just go by every step that we have taken over this last year, the finger sure points to us, doesn't it? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, I think they have discovered what department in the United States leaked it. I, I, it's, it's mentioned in the news. I'd have to look it up. But I know they've definitely found that it was someone in our government in one of the branches there. But the other thing that people need to know is the very name Hamas means violence. That's what it means. It means violence. And how do you negotiate with violence? You don't. You have to destroy it completely. And Amalek, some of your listeners may have heard the word Amalek. Well, Amalek in Hebrew means to chop up body parts. That's exactly what Hamas did. This is the whole spirit of Amalek that God said he would have a war with. And every generation, and people need to understand, this generation, it was Hitler last generation, this generation, it is right now, God is having war with Amalek. And that's what's going to happen over the next two years. I talk about in my book, and it is laid out in the stars. And you say the name Palestine, uh, Palestinians, it came from Philistine, which means? Well, yeah, they're uh, invaders. Invaders. That's what the Philistines were, were invaders. But there's never been a Palestinian country in over 3,000 years. There's never been a Palestinian government, Palestinian currency. It's a myth. It's a total myth. And the world propagates it. And the media is just all too pleased to go along with it. it there's this unholy alliance between the left and Islamism. And... Uh, yeah. And that what's amazing about it, I mean, why in the world do you see all these LGBTQ, LMNLP people rooting for Hamas? Hamas will kill them in a heartbeat. It's, it's like chickens voting for KFC. Yeah. You know, uh, they're going to be killed. But I think the it's a demonic alliance, really, between those who want to serve God and those who don't. You know, somebody confided in me. They asked me about it. Uh, they had a, a trans grandchild and they confided in me. They said, listen, the trans people are scared to death that uh, Trump is going to do this to them. He's going to do that to them. And I said, and that Trump should do something to explain that he's not. I said, well, how's he supposed to explain something that, that he never said he was going to do? Right. Everybody's got equal rights under the laws. And this was total propaganda. They are being frightened to death. Right. They have these websites that are convincing these trans people that Trump is it's going to be the death of them if Trump gets elected. And really, it's really quite the opposite. It's right. quite the opposite, because as you point out, uh, some of them are, are marching with Hamas. It makes no sense at all. Uh, they would kill them. Yeah, absolutely yeah. right. And it's amazing that the people of color seem to support the Democratic Party. And the Democratic Party are the cruelest to the people of color than the right could ever be. Well, nobody knows that the Democrats uh, were the KKK. I know. Exactly. Exactly. And slavery, all the slave owners, I think virtually all, if not all of them, were Democrats. Yeah. 
and Islam. It was Muslims who were sending the Africans over to the United States. And and for that matter, uh, people should know this too, Pastor. Out of the out of all the slaves that were sent over from the uh, from overseas, there's a transatlantic slave commission. Yes, and they came out with a statistic that of all the slaves that came over the Atlantic, ninety four percent of them went to Brazil. Yeah, two percent went to the Caribbean, and four percent went to what we call America's Deep South. Just a little interesting thing, because you would never know that. You would think that America invented slavery. Exactly. You know. Uh, no way. All right, the dollar. I'm not a great economist here, um, but we know that the, glo- that the dollar is in jeopardy, and there are countries that are aligning to try to take the U.S. dollar down as the, uh, as the world uh, reserve. Can Donald Trump uh, help fend off the, uh, the collapse of, uh, of the dollar or the collapse of currency itself? I don't know if there's anything he can do about it. I think it's way beyond his control. We are so much in debt. I mean, he can try, but the world currency being $100 trillion in debt, uh, I, I don't see there is any hope, but here's the big thing. It's the deep state that wants to get rid of both America and Israel as the two strongest democracies. They want global government. To have global government, you need global control, which is why I believe the Democrats are totally trying to take the United States down. It's because they're being paid by the George Soros and all these people that want to take control over the whole world. And I'm in my book, I mentioned this, I believe we're going to have a digital currency by the end of 2025 because everything's going to be collapsing. Okay. Uh, folks, the pastor mentioned that Israel's been around for 75 years. They were never attacked by Iran. And yet, through your blood moon theory, am I correct? You were able to predict that Israel would be attacked by Iran. In fact, you even nailed it, uh, I think, to the exact month. Is that correct? Tell the folks about it. Really, almost to the exact day. I had said, and this was a year ago when I wrote the book, I said that Iran would attack Israel in early April, okay? And that's a, I'm the only one who forecasted that. And it's written, I have proof in my book that they would attack in early April. And as you just appropriately said, Here, Israel's been around 75 years, have never been directly attacked by Iran. It's always been proxies. Well, this comes from a prophecy in the book of Daniel. In Daniel chapter 10, he's having a vision, and this angel tells him it's the vision for the last days. So that prophecy was for us today, and in it, this angel is attacking the prince of Persia or Iran. And then he tells Daniel, I have to go back and fight the prince of Persia. Well, in Daniel 10, you'll see that is happening in the month of April. It is in the month of April on our calendar. So I knew that that was going to attack would happen in April. And not only that, it happened on the third day of the month of Nisan, which was the exact same day that Iran gave a three-day warning that they were going to attack the very same day as Daniel's prayer. I mean, this is just off the chart, uh, astronomically, uh, the chances. What are some of the experts in prophecies uh, uh, talking to you about with this? Are they are they picking up on this? Uh, are they resisting because it's not theirs? Or or how is it being met by the world of, of those that prophesy? Well, some Explain of them. The well, some of them are seeing it and it's mind blowing, the number of people that are finally getting it. Uh, Some people are scoffing at it, but for me, this is math and science and the Bible. I'm not prophesying anything. I'm just saying what the Bible says, what NASA says, and I just connect dots. And so for some people there is not even on their radar or they're too woke, but there are a lot, I mean a lot that are. As a matter of fact, when I meet Uh, when I I teach every weekend at ESM.us, we will have up to 300 cities and 30 nations watching live. I mean, this, we have about 250,000 people that are watching. 
So it's growing, uh, not only all of the United States, well, we'll have people from all 50 states listening every weekend, but we'll have up to 30 nations watching. So in one sense, it's catching on like crazy, but that's still small when it comes to the entire world. Here's something I know our folks would want to hear or, or know about. You're saying that the, because it's specific, you're saying that the tribulation uh, will either begin in the fall of 2029 to 2030. And if it doesn't happen then, that then it won't happen until 2036. You have to be the number one most amazing interviewer I have ever had in all of history. Don't say that, Jiggy will give me more to do. Oh, my <laughs> word. You are phenomenal. Well, here's the thing. I know this may come as a shock to your listeners, but the prophet Daniel was Jewish. What a shock. He was Jewish. Well, he wasn't using our pagan Roman solar calendar. He was using the biblical calendar. And many of your listeners may be familiar with what is called Daniel's 70 weeks. And there's one week left. And that week is the seven year week for the Shemitah cycle. Well, that means the tribulation, if there's one week of seven years left, can't start any year or any time during the year. It's a Shemitah cycle. He wasn't on our calendar. And the whole reason they went into captivity was because they weren't keeping the seven year cycle. So that tells us this last seven year cycle has to begin the beginning of a Shemitah cycle. Well, we're right now entering the middle of a Shemitah cycle. So that means the next possibility for the tribulation to begin is the fall of 2029. And if it doesn't happen, it can't happen for seven more years. This is basic Bible, math, and science. And if the church gets on the right calendar, we're supposed to know the time and seasons. I'm not setting dates. I'm not setting the day. Uh, but I do believe the tribulation will begin at the beginning of a Shemitah cycle on Rosh Hashanah. I'm almost afraid to ask you what the Shemitah cycle is because I know it's going to be very heady. And, and hard I can to make understand. it simple. I can make it simple. Go ahead. Real quick. It's just, just like the seventh day they were to rest, the seventh year the land got to rest. This is where we also got our seven-year bankruptcy law from. You can only claim bankruptcy once every seven years. Well, in Israel, every seven years was an economic reset. And then after the 49th year, there was the Jubilee where there was a complete economic reset and everyone got their land back. So basically, the Shemitah year just means the seventh year of a seven-year cycle where everyone got to get their economy back set. Pastor, on the, on your website, esm.us, uh, do you give any courses that that a layman would be able to follow or I got, you don't have any beginner classes in this. I mean, probably everybody that, that, that tunes into you is, is well-versed in the Bible. Well, I do have a book called God's day timer, which is really, really pretty simple. And it comes with a DVD and they can watch it and go over it and over it. So we do have somewhat beginner classes, but thing is we don't charge for hardly anything. All of my teachings for the last three or four years are free with the notes on our website. Mm -hmm. They can simply go to our archive and get caught up with everything that we're teaching. And I, you can even learn Hebrew on our website, the Hebrew letters. We make it simple. I didn't even get to that about the connection between Christianity and Judaism. That you, but, but let me move on to this. Well, no, I can't. I brought it up. Uh, okay. <laughs> what, what is the importance of the connection between Christianity and Judaism? Well, I think it's so important for Christians to understand in the New Testament, it says we see through a glass darkly. We only know in part. Well, in Romans 11, it says the Jews were only blinded in part. So both Jew and non-Jew that believes in the Messiah each see through one eye. And the first group to humble themselves and look out of the other lands gets to see the whole picture. And so I think it takes humility to realize we don't know it all. We only know in part. The Jews don't know it all. They only know in part. But it's like uh, there's a lot of bones in Judaism, but there's a lot of bones in Christianity too. And I'm not going to turn down a T-bone steak because there's a bone in it. <laughs> and so, you know, like I say, I know how to eat chicken. I eat to meat, draw to bone. And so I have to throw out the bones in Christianity, the, throne, the bones in Judaism, 
but oh my, what a feast. You know, I, I don't know of any guest. I don't remember ever having a guest where the time has gone by so quickly. We're not done yet, though. Is that book very far behind you that you could hold up to the camera? Is it too oh, far for you to reach? No, this is... Uh, yeah, bring it up to the camera. This is the book, America at War, 2024 through 2026, The Sons of Light versus The Sons of Darkness. Uh, it's normally like $39, and it's only $19 now. We have that for a half price on Amazon and on our website. It's a hardback book. It is full of uh, color pages. And look at this. The print is huge for all of us <laughs> older people. Okay. So the print is huge. It's in full color. It's a hardback book. And it's only $19.95. And they can get it at, at e Amazon or ESM.us. Yes, exactly. Now, <clears throat> to wind things up a little bit here, I, one of the most poignant things that you said, and although I am encouraged by the title of your book, because it says the sons of light versus the sons of darkness, meaning that there is a battle that we can win. It's yeah. not pre-etched in stone. So right. it does matter what we do. Uh, and one of the most poignant things that you said, and we say this a lot, but to hear it coming from a, a pastor of your significance, uh, it just really corroborates things, unfortunately. You say that the forces within our, there are forces within our own government who want to destroy America. And so we do have a choice with this election. Absolutely. But most importantly, with everything that you see perched from your view, which is a bird's eye view, and you gave us a, a, a general understanding of, of, of how you did this, but more importantly, uh, to understand what your conclusions are with this. So... What, what message, and take your time, what message do you have for our audience today? One thing, the main message is don't be afraid. We're never to move in fear. And the only way that's going to happen is if you know God's in control. And that's why I want people to be aware that you know beforehand what's coming. Therefore, don't be afraid, but trust in God. We can't trust in everything that we possess or in all of our things that we've uh, packed away for food or whatever, because the time could come when you have to abandon it. And so the main thing is for everyone to trust in God. But the reason why I say war is coming, believe it or not, Roger, there are eclipses coming over the next two years that are mind blowing and they all speak of war. Those may of uh, your listeners may be familiar with the book of Esther, which is a festival called Purim, which is where Amalek tries to destroy Israel. It's Haman. Well, there are lunar eclipses on that very day, two years in a row. There are also solar eclipses on the first of Nisan, two years in a row, and on Rosh Hashanah, two years in a row, and lunar eclipses during the month of repentance, uh, which is, you know, like August, September. So I really see that the other thing is every tribe of Israel was assigned a month. The east side traveled first to war and it's led by Judah. So every tribe had a month. It just so happens the eclipses over the next two years are in the exact same order as Israel went to war to take the promised land. And so it's set up in the stars that war is coming. I don't know if we could ever stop the war, but what we can do is time to draw close to God. And you better be doing that before the door closes. Right. So would that actually be your message then to the folks to to turn to God or, or to vote? Yeah. Or what, what, what's your last cool. message for our audience? What action should they take? They should vote, number one, uh, because that's just a few uh, days away. But number two, the main thing is they better find their protection, not in what they've supplied, but in God. Pastor, you've been such a joy and a pleasure. Uh, he offered to send me his book, so I, I will get you uh, that address. And uh, I can't tell you what a pleasure it's been to have you here. It seems like uh, this went by in about 10 or 15 minutes. I know. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is Pastor Mark Biltz, B-I-L-T-Z. And uh, go to his website, www.esm.com. 
us. And Pastor, yes, thank you so much for being with us today. You were you were wonderful. You were a real pleasure. Well, thank you. It was great being with you, Roger. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. And he was a real pleasure, don't you think, folks? Uh, I don't know how to get out of this mode here, but uh, well. That's why you have editing, I suppose. Here we go. What a real pleasure. I mean, the guy's got more energy. Uh, kind of reminds me of Trump, actually, with the energy he has. And I know uh, Pastor Biltz could have gone on for hours. And in fact, would actually need to go on for hours um, to try to get us to understand a little bit more. But I, I figured it wasn't that important to understand the mathematics, the mathematics and the science of it. It was more important to really go on and understand, okay, well, what does that all mean? And, and I think he did that. And we need to go out and vote. And we know what side we need to vote on. I think, I, I don't think it's, uh, corny to say we need to vote for the side that God would want us to vote on. I think it's pretty obvious. I mean, that became obvious to me years ago when in the uh, Democratic Convention a number of years ago, they literally voted God out of the convention. I'm not making that, but they did. And then there was such an uproar about it, ah, they decided to vote him back in. Well, too little, too late. So we've got to get Trump in there. And He'll do the best he can. And, you know, I've got to say something, folks. I've been extremely upset over what's been happening with the country and how we have been going on the wrong side of history. This country never used to willfully be on the wrong side of history. And yet that's exactly what it seems we're doing now. We're, we're on the wrong side of history, and it's extremely frustrating. And the only way we're going to be able to correct that is to elect Trump so that our allies can be assured once again they're actually our ally and not our enemy and that we can get back the country that we used to have. You know, the problem that I have adjusting to today's America and today's world is that I had such a great childhood. You know, it was Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, and, and uh, I always thought it was very generous of Christian America to wish the Jews happy Hanukkah. They, after all, it was only a couple percent of them that were American, but everybody was fine with that. And we had Christmas uh, vacations and, and the kids loved it at school. And, you know, we had all the, America had a unity. It had a culture. We had a continuity from year to year before people came to break us all apart. Now, what we've got to do is simply Remember who we were after 9-11. Remember who we were after 9-11 before the radicals came into power and split us all apart. Uh, I'm going to take a very quick break now before I say goodbye. I'm just going to play a, oh, uh, a parody for you that I did a while ago uh, for President Trump. Let's see if you like it. Deplorable hoax, he was right all along. He was right about the wall, open borders, fentanyl, everybody walking across without a wall. Stranded in Afghanistan, left to face the Taliban, never have we left our people behind. American way. So keep your hands off Christmas, the flag and our traditions. He was right about that. He was right all along. You may not want to hear it. Some of you may fear it. Trump always ended up right. He was right all along. You may not want to hear it. Trump always ended up right, he was right all along. 
Well, we'd like to thank uh, Pastor Mark Biltz again for being on the Jiggy Jaguar show. Uh, he was an amazing guest. And like I say, folks, look, we just need to remember. We just need to remember who we are. You know, we were scolded. We were told we're no longer a Christian country. Excuse me. I beg to differ. We were founded by Christians under the principle of every being equal. Things worked its way out with the Constitution, and now everybody is equal. Folks, no parent wants to live to see their child die, and no patriot wants to see to live to see America die. We can never, ever allow that to happen. This is the Jiggy Jaguar Show, Roger Holmfield of the Joe Citizen Show, sitting in for Jiggy Jaguar. Thank you for being with us. Bye-bye, so long, farewell. Bye bye, so long. See you in November at the polls where we are gonna have our say. Better see you in November. It's our chance to throw these fools away. Bye-bye, so long.